a team that squeaked in at the last second. It'd be uh, one hell of a story, wouldn't it? Yeah. That it was the, that's the point I was trying to make, Tim. Yeah. And I agreed. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you agree. And I do. Tim, we ignored Banzo. Do you want to talk about him now? Yeah, well, let's have a look at him. We'll see what comes through. Knock Ban. Not too much of a surprise. We saw G2 using Knocked that too much earlier. Of a <laughs> Thank you. Again, um, we've also, out. you know, when I referenced people picking up on EU, maybe not playing as much knock when available. I think Super was part of that. Um, you know, so one of those voices that was saying, you know, knock is super powerful. So not too much of a surprise to see the ban coming in from the North American side. Thatcher, uh, long expected, probably have about an 80 or 90% ban rate here at the major, I would expect. And then Kaid. That's reasonable. Um, I spoke about the I spoke about the electric denial of the walls in Armory and Thorn, particularly. We've got a couple of important hatches sometimes as well here on theme park, so not too much of a surprise. No. The nut coming in is a second target ban today against Alamau, by the way. In the game against Sandbox earlier on, they banned Twitch away from him on Shelley. Whereas coming here into theme park, the nut is taken away, which is why he was somewhat exasperated in the chat with all those question marks. Many questions to be asked, but the answer was quite simple. They just fear the death that may come from him playing on the nook. We're going to start things off in Armory and Throne on the downstairs. Sonic's kicking things off on the fence. G2 starting on a side that many teams lament being on this side of in this map. It is going to be the attack on Theme Park. Now, again, I referenced back the game between FaZe and Sandbox earlier and how both teams at points got a little bit stuck, a little bit hung up by the Roamers. So let's see how Rome heavy Sonics go. Looking at their lineup, I'm seeing things like Kanzen, Grixer, maybe even Rexen as well on the Legion getting out and about around the map. But for the side of G2, it's going to be how fast they can deal with the possible impediments being put before them, especially things like those uh, Vulcan canisters. Well, I was just going to comment on this. Watching Yeti on the setup, taking the Goyo. Um, we've got Banshees, we've got Vulcan canisters, we've got everything going top floor here. We did see a presence on the top floor previously, but we haven't really seen a team try to hold on to it to this degree. Now, if you're wondering why that is, you know, why is the top floor maybe not as important? A lot of that comes down to the lack of verticality on the park particularly on this site there's not a lot of verticality or there are two small areas um, where you can gain an angle down into site but largely it can be difficult for attackers to do anything from up there but 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 that does not mean that you can leave the defenders in place up there because of course you open yourself up to potential flanks if you're to go into the bomb site without clearing that out so it is something that needs to be dealt with but yet he put in all three Vulcan canisters up on that top floor around cafe around arcade that that is just a big marker of the sort of area that the Sonics want to be holding on to. It is. And again, I wanted to see how much they got out in the map and look to be controlling here. They've gone out with all control as well. Potentially three or four players out on that top floor trying to waste a bit of time. And the G2, they had the Twitch drone rifling through sight from Citizen. It's one thing I've kind of noted about Citizen is both his droning, whether it's with shock drones or normal drones, he does like to consume them generally quite early in the rounds. So we can then focus on being guns up and being led in by the rest of the team. Now, whether that's entirely by decision, i.e. we want you to get information fast. It doesn't matter if you lose the drones or not. I'm not sure. But it does, again, free him up to then let others carry on droning so he can put the focus on being the fragger for the team. Citizen running through with the Twitch drones. Going to clear out a lot of the downstairs utility. The default cams won't have too much of a problem. There's nobody down there to challenge that drone. But as he heads upstairs, going to have to take a little bit more care. And I'm sure they're going to be aware... Um, of the presence of four of the Sonics players up on the top floor. First Vulcan canister is going to be popped and that's going to at least give G2 an avenue, an uh, area of ingress potentially. We've got Alamo just... Uh, working on the cafe door citizen interestingly downstairs on the twitch looking directly towards site but it's ultimately going to be Grixer who picks up the first he's going to find Doki on the entry and we're going to have Virtue taken down as well this top floor clearance is not going well oh. for G2 right now that is not like citizens who missing shots like that they've been absolutely decimated by Kanzen a bit of a whiff coming up on yellow a slight miss timing from Virtue Doki being ahead of the pack has just led to them being destroyed a very comfortable first round for Sonics, who look largely untroubled up there, Tim. Yeah, it's all down to Prano, one versus five. It's going to have to be an ace clutch. 37 seconds left to go. I would suggest that this is probably unlikely. I think it is fair to say. He's just going to be uh, holding his position for the time being, maybe just take the opportunity for the guys at G2 to have a chat amongst themselves about exactly what's happened there. You know, he might get himself an exit frag or two if Sonics choose to come looking for him, but I don't think they will. They'll be just as equally happy to have a sit and have a chat themselves and just, you know, reinforce what's worked um, and why and, you know, what can they take from this round. 
if one player can go off huge like that and win the round for you too, then I imagine for G2 there's not too much to talk about because I felt they did a lot of things right in terms of the early droning they did, the movements they were making. They looked to get control of top yellow, for example. It was very safe, sensible. They were doing all the right stuff. They just lost when it came around to a little bit of team play because, well, Kansan hits a nutty 3k. Fair play, though. Sonics hold firm. Good first round as they now go into bunk and daycare. It's going to be interesting to see G2 play against a little bit of adversity as well. Sandbox, pretty much everything went their way largely. Um, so seeing them now start to get really challenged potentially, I mean, that round I think can only be described as easy for the Sonics. You know, it really didn't take much movement from them. The fights came to them. Their setup was good. Uh, they'd set the stall light right, that they were holding on to the top floor. There was four of them up there. Absolutely no way that they were going to be moved. And G2 find that out the hard way. So this time around, it's going to be round two sonics continue on the defense it's going to be bunk and daycare um now then they have not brought along the goyo this time interestingly they're not going to be looking to slow g2 down necessarily in the top floor push specifically they do have the frost mats in place um which is going to take a little bit of care just prevent access in through that arcade window but i would imagine we will probably see g2 pushing from the east side looking to get themselves established inside a cache control and move across from there they had rotated off who was playing what operator as well, where Doki was on the Twitch for a couple of seconds there, looking to be the replacement for Citizen, who's now gone on towards the Finca, but then changes over to the Yana. So this is actually a lot of what we saw back in their game earlier today, was Citizen headlining with the Finca, Doki the supporting act with the Yana, and Alabama normally sitting somewhere in midfield as well, playing things like the Twitch, like the Nook, like the Dekebi in this case. So lots of aggression packed into this team. They've got the right sort of lineup. It's on Sonics to disrupt that early in the round and take away a couple of those crucial operators. And they may well find one here. I actually thought for a second that Yeti was getting ready to see for up that hatch straight away. He's still in aggressive fell. on it's it. Fell. He's, he's going to keep the uh, he's going to keep the angle there for the time being. Virtue's actually backed away from there. Uh, but Yeti just sort of signaling here that the Sonics are not going to be easily pushed back out of these positions. They are quite happy to hold on to it. As you say, the Nitro just falling as that hatch gets opened up. So he wasn't quick enough on the trigger um, to detonate. It. He's more than likely going to want to go and collect that utility, yet he's just waiting until he can be confident that the player has moved on. For the time being, interestingly, Doki on a rotation here. He's going to go the entire way around the map and look to sneak his way in from that cafe side. I think Yeti did just try there and almost got blown down. I believe it was by Citizen who was pushing up above him. Able to bit virtue though, but either way, it's a good few shots to scare him away from getting that C4 back. And we'll sure enough know it's going to be unrecoverable this round. Doki just having a very good idea there of the utility, even though one was a mute jammer, still knowing exactly what he was going into. Uses the Gonsick to take down the Banshee. Rexen. Both weren't really ready for that fight then. We just see Rexon taking some damage there, and I felt Doki was lucky to get away with his life, potentially. <laughs> Alamo sees his man, and there's a lot of bad siege timing going on here. Oh, but look at them. Three members of Sonic's down to a slither of HP. It's going to be one shot or bust, essentially, for a few of them here. One steps in, and it's Citizen to lose out. Grixer again takes damage. They're getting hit but not finished often. This could have been three or four kills for G2, but it's all falling by the wayside as Yeti finds one back. Surely G2 don't give this away. As you say, everybody finding these kills is doing so with limited HP, making the most out of the life that they've got. Now then, Doki manages to swing onto Yeti, finds himself a second. That's big. That's what G2 needed. The Iana just coming in there and managing to get explosive, get a couple of kills and start to grab a little bit of territory for G2. But the question is, do they know that Grixer is moving around to try and hit them on the flank? Well, at least they balance things back out, and that's the important part. But that clock becomes a sixth man here, Tim. I always talk about it. The last 30 seconds, the clock starts to build in the defender's favour. Grixer bringing down Prano, leaving just Virtue and Doki to pull this off, but it can't be done. Rexon, be a couple of kills there inside the side itself, and Virtue won't be able to bring this one back by himself with 10 seconds on the clock. G2 off to a slow start. Sonics standing resolute in the face of their aggression. We'll take the first two rounds. Yep, Sonics looking good so far. Uh, pretty much what we would expect on Theme Park. You know, we can't get carried away. The defense on Theme Park doing pretty well, but the problem for G2, and I commented on this in the Sandbox game, is G2 historically aren't great on the defense, so you can't can't necessarily rely on that from them in the second half. It was the area that they struggled on on Chalet against Sandbox, and I would expect to see more of the same, but the problem that they've got is that I feel like Sonics are probably a much more clinical team than Sandbox, so that defense is going to get picked apart quickly. G2 need to get some rounds in this first attacking half. Round number three, third attempt, is going to be down to lab and storage. And even think about it as well, the Valkyrie wasn't banned away in the ban phase. 
don't really see her all that much at all these days. She's banned away on the vast majority of maps because even though she lost the ability to have the long-term outdoor cams, for example, they're still just so impactful on the inside. The teams would rather see that information taken away. And it's hard as well thinking about it. Like, how do you balance it? Do you take away a camera, for example? Because the MPX isn't exactly a good gun. It's just the information that is that terrifying to deal with. G2 so far for me struggling to take uh, any sort of reasonable map control um, in in the sort of first half of the map particularly. They're not getting themselves inside. They're not winning those couple of early gunfights. We've commented Grix has picked up both entry kills so far. I feel like G2 need to give themselves the opportunity to win a round. They need to get that entry kill. They need to take a bit of map control of this top floor and then start working from there. Then we'll be able to have a proper opinion on this attack. For the time being, it's just been pretty toothless. Well, I imagine that's the last time team about to start their game, Tim. I would have thought <laughs> so. That was a very, I don't know if you guys hear that kind of stuff at home, but I mentioned earlier on, there's a big like gap next to us where there's a big drop. And then across the way, there's like four floors where the teams are all set up and we can see them all. And you hear everything. It just reverb reverberates around the entire venue. It's fantastic. And no doubt you'll hear some of that as this game continues as well. We've heard little cheers coming out of Sonic so far. Wait until you see some more rounds start being won as the kills start stacking up and they start getting towards that potential three points that NA so sorely need. Okay then, Alamo once again just sending that Twitch drone in. It's something that uh, G2 have used consistently to go in and try to clear out utility. Obviously primary function of the drone. Just going to feed information into the location there. And that was something that I thought G2 did well last time against Sandbox was they found players and they were in a position ready to attack, ready to challenge. Whereas this game, they just feel like they're a little bit behind that pace. Instead, Citizen taking damage from Yeti there, even though he was aware of that location to begin with. Got a little bit of an assist there as well. I mean, Citizen juiced himself back up, negating a lot of the damage, but there were two or three Sonics players hanging around yellow, and you cannot afford to push that by yourself. You can sit and grind through it with utility in back pocket if you want, but I imagine on G2 side, six frags in back pocket. They really want to be getting used to those into some critical locations, removing things like the Vulcan canisters, looking in towards bulletproof cameras, shields, but most importantly, players. They found so many nade kills in their game earlier today that why wouldn't you be trying to double down on that? As I said last time around, I'm just a little bit concerned um, about progress that's been made. We're way over halfway, and G2 have got control of half of the bottom floor. They haven't been able to move the players on the top floor. They're, of course, pushing in to lab and storage, which does have verticality above it, so they really need to be clearing Cafe out because getting a plant down could be difficult without doing so. But again, everything just a little bit slow for G2 here. Nobody able to put any real impetus into the round, get that opening kill, give them that spark that's going to push them forward absolutely rotating everything off here and again that clock running down is what makes me the most nervous citizen finally picked off not quite the stellar game that he was having earlier on when he was like what 15 then something stupid right now he's zero and three he's really struggling to make an impact yet he's finding another sonic just on all cylinders at the minute and g2 aren't i wonder at what point tim the conversation comes out for a timeout to get things reset here because it is not the g2 we saw earlier today no absolutely not and the pattern is the same for sonics every single time and that is stay patient for the first half g2 will present themselves for a gunfight which we will inevitably win and then we will go on to push forward in the round from there how many times have we seen players one versus five now this is like the third time that we've seen that virtue twice prano or once and the sonic so we've seen g2 have struggles through stage two i think they've done fantastically well in the second half they've had a big improvement to get themselves here to berlin my question is how will they perform under that bit of pressure how will they perform when the going gets tough and that's the sort of thing we're not just going to find out in this game you know Arguably, let's look beyond this game, say the pattern continues and Sonics dominate and take the three points. G2 have more games to come in the group stages. How does it affect them through those games as well? How is the mental? That's going to be a big question going on from not just during this game, but beyond as well. And we saw it really kind of coming into effect in the early of stage two, right? The early parts of stage two when they were down three, four games, not able to really find a win out of anywhere. And it looked like the team might implode. And sure enough, they had a rally towards the back end of the stage, but... Is it enough to carry them through a major, like you say, Tim? Here, at least, there's three or four players from Sonics once again up on the top floor. Four of them is to be the exact count. And why wouldn't you, you know, why wouldn't you do the exact same as you did last time round? It worked so well. They wasted so much time. And G2 are the ones who are left struggling to find an answer. So really doubling down on that pain there, committing four members rather than three. 
Makes total sense to me. Yeah, absolutely. They've switched it up a little bit. Uh, they don't have the Goyo on side this time. Instead, Yeti's on the Capcan, another operator that's going to do uh, a similar function. It's going to slow things down. It's going to mean that the push, uh, the attackers have to be careful going through doorways, making sure it's drawn, making sure utility's cleared. Um, you know, potentially going to take a little bit of damage along the way. Now then, Three. this is what we were talking yeah. about. Vertical near Citizen's actually going to put it back in pocket. Um, he's not going to take the opportunity to try and go for that one. We saw him pushing directly towards site last time around. Um, just dips himself away from that is not quite on a destructible surface Wrexham which is why Citizen put that nade back in pocket but he now strays his way into cash and could leave himself as an opportunity and Citizen he's straight over there having a look Wrong very aware of it though very aware of it he is once again yet he's having a field day brings down Doki still a rough performance overall but Prano finally collects a kill as well with the claymore before Wrexham finds one back not sure if that was a double run out attempt there, but they do get back a kill and still leave things at three and three, despite looking like what well, we're seeing what looked to be a bit of a rough patch for G2. It is quicker play from G2, which is something. They've got themselves a couple of kills in the first half of the round this time, rather than having to wait until later in the round. Citizen knows that there's somebody just on the opposite side. Rexon needs to keep himself in behind that reinforcement. If he's not careful, he'll find himself getting gunned down. But Citizen, for the time being, he's just going to hold his angle, but no, he goes for the spray down at the wrong time. And if that doesn't tell you everything you need to know about G2 and their performance here on Theme Park. How things are going for them, I don't know what will. Citizen doesn't spray down initially when he's there. He then does when he's moved, moving off the angle. Finally gets the kill with the nade. Two versus three, 50 seconds, but I wouldn't put it past Super and Grixer to hold on. I think Virtue was sat on drones as well, trying to feed Citizen in when really Virtue was the one there waiting for the cut to catch Rexon on the pull back. So although he slips up a little bit, he holds that bathroom door, oh, nay comes through from Citizen. Here. We've seen those flying all day so far, and it connects nice and true. His first kill of the game. But as you say, we're into that last 30 now. They've got the numbers advantage, but can they pull things off together? Citizen finds one, one left standing. It's Grixer upstairs. I don't know if he'll be able to do much up here by himself just yet. We're going to work his way back down towards Dragon as Virtue goes in for the plan. This is exactly what I was talking about with this site. There is practically no vertical access to it. So the Sonics really fall in foul of that fact. Like I said, it's all well and good holding on to the top floor of Armory Thorn. But if you do and the attackers get the site, they have to be aware of the flanks, absolutely. But you've only got the flanks to use. Yeah. There was no option there for Grixer to deny that plant, to have any sort of work or impact on it from above. He had to come down to the doors. So once G2 are secure in sight, they've got two single doors. They hadn't even done a hard breach there. So there was nowhere else that they needed to watch. They watched split door and they watched dragon door. Simple as that. All right, well, they've got one. Can they make it into two? We look back at the game earlier and Sandbox on the defensive side, we felt a 3-3 split that it should have been maybe a 5-1 to the side of Sandbox, if not for Cyber pulling out some mega rounds. It could be the same for G2 where Sonics have looked arguably the more dominant of the two teams, but G2 has still managed to get rounds on the board, and then it all comes down to that second half of the map. Okay, then we're going to see Bunk and Daycare. Sonic's choosing to move on. It's the same site that we saw them move to last time around. Uh, G2 tried to push across from the east side, but Sonics once again were able to just clear those kills out one at a time as they came in, um, as the challenges were made. G2, again, same as they did last time, they need to get those early kills in the first half of the round. Rexon this time, he's deciding to take the fight to G2. He's going to take a few pot shots there out of the window towards the bumper cars, but he's not going to find anybody. G2 being particularly cautious on the approach. Really curious that they've moved away to the IQ here. I thought maybe that other, that's the sort of pick that normally is inspired by seeing a Valkyrie pit because small black eye cameras, hard to find in the tucked away in tight places. That's exactly why the IQ is useful. So maybe here it's a gun thing that he's moved away to playing on it. Not entirely sure. Pano double claim on this window as Yeti is literally seconds away from it, but he has no idea. I don't think either of them do that someone was on the other side of that barricade. I don't know if he maybe just got a little bit of audio to think that the, the claymores maybe get implanted, but as you say, not enough for him to make a challenge. I think sometimes with Citizen and, uh, you know, the IQ issue there, there's obviously the claymores, they've suffered to jump out, so let's bring those along. But I think sometimes for Citizen, it's just who is he comfortable playing? Which gun does he want to bring? Um, you know, That's like it. you say, maybe more so than the utility being brought along uh, 
uh, particularly in terms of that primary gadget. Now then, for the time being, Alamo has pushed his way towards Cafe Citizens working on those bunk windows, and I think that tells us what we need to know. They need the Claymores to keep him safe. Prano, Citizen, Virtue, all work in those windows. They can't have any jump outs. And a jump out here would kill, what, two, maybe three players? Exactly, exactly. It would be round ending. There's no other way around it. Looking towards the control of Arcade as well. You've got Doki playing on the downstairs. Maybe wanting to soften them up from below. And there's the jump out, but jumps straight into the Claymore and doesn't net a kill on the way through either. Good emergency juice coming out from Citizen. Keeps himself alive before finally he gets finished off. And Rexon has found two here as well. That is how you shut down that kind of aggression. And it's all done the old-fashioned way, Tim, from inside the building. Rexon's gone big there exactly when Sonic's needed it. One minute left to go. Three versus three. And G2, it's sort of back to the drawing board. They'd drawn out that aggression that they wanted from Sonics. We commented that they brought along the extra Claymores. They were playing into the hand of potentially having those jump outs. And they got what they wanted they got their reward but it hasn't been enough because Sonics have got a plan B they've got a plan C they're able to adapt and fight around it Alamo he has no option but to push in here going to be taken down by Kanzen we're going to see another one on the yellow stairs Grixer manages to find Dork he shuts him down and that leaves us now in a one versus three for Prano 35 seconds left to go starts pushing in towards sight but shut down through that soft wall and that is going to be a great round from Sonics there despite the early attempts at aggression not paying off still able to find the round win. It feels a bit like when all things are equal between the two teams, i.e. they've had their start, they've tried jump outs, all the other madness. Sonics just have it nailed down. When it comes to the gunfights, maybe G2 are pushing in a little bit isolated, but they look like a lot of 1v1s to me. It's a very, Sonics, yeah, definitely a lot of 1v1s. Sonics just feel like they have a better grasp of the situation and know what to do. So G2 still trying to find their way back in. For Sonics, I'll be shocked if this doesn't prove to be a 5-1 half. It's easy to say because G2 are behind, um, yeah. but it does look more similar to the G2 play style that we saw at the beginning of the stage rather than the end. Like you said, I'm not saying that they're necessarily not drawn in for each other or you know playing solo, but a lot of one-for-one -one gunfights. You know, when we, when we look back to them playing Sandbox on Chalet earlier today, I commented that it was very much going in in twos and threes. We've yeah. located somebody, moving together, yeah, get the kill, I'll force him into your line. You know, there was a lot more of that going on than we see in here. Alamo on the Lion, pushes into Corridor, gets taken down by Kanzen, 1v1. Doki pushes up the yellow stairs, gets taken down by Grixer, 1v1. It's a problem for G2 right now. Very curious to see where Alamo's going with this Amaro as well. Now, the thing is, some teams pick Amaro and don't use it for the purpose you think. They aren't using it to zip in through a window. They just want the gun. They need three flashes, for example. I think she's perfectly fine with doing that for them. So maybe that is the end use case here, but you're not going to see any mad rush here at the 2 minute 45 mark, for example. Just more standard play. I mean, you're on a downstairs site to begin with, um, so the Amaru wouldn't really, unless you're going to zip in through the lab window, um, you know, through the storage Imagine. window, you're probably not going to be going for that one. Let's be honest, it's only going to end one way. Now then, opening kill, Doki manages to get Rex, and can G2 have a little bit more impact here? I want to see them work as a team, go in together, look to take challenges together, so you're in a position to trade, you're in a position to impact on deaths, should they happen. Doki gets oh. a second onto Kanzen, this is better. Doki's going in, he's got players surrounding him, he's got a little bit of backup, but Grixer, he manages to find his man, shuts him down after the 2k, Dorky's job is done so far in this round, on the Iana, that's exactly what you're looking for from him, G2 still have the advantage for V3, they should be looking towards top floor control now, Sonics have largely been pushed back towards site, G2, it's time to start softening that site up. It was nice for a second for G2 because they had that drone at the top of yellow that fed Doki the information of where to push, but just not enough respect being paid to the open hatch, I don't even think G2 open it. I'm pretty sure Sonics were playing it to have a faster retreat angle for the defenders when they wanted to get their way back down, but ultimately able to use it instead to catch out a player that either A didn't expect it to be open or B didn't quite know what he was looking for. Yeti onto Citizen. Bricks are onto another. This is what I mean. We get to these mid-round points and Sonics just explode. That's it. They just notch it up a gear. They just go, you know, to the, to the extra degree. They just put a little bit more juice on it and just really do propel themselves away from G2. And it's all in these mid-round flurries that are being won by the Sonics. It's almost they lose lives 
throwing G2 into the position, into the, the spot that they want them, and then they cut them down. Fantastic play so far from Sonics, and it's looking um, for all the money like a 5-1 half here as Virtue finds himself in a 1v2, but let's not write him off just yet. There is plenty of work that he can do. 40 seconds left to go, and we know that Virtue is capable of the big clutch moments. I just love that it's the three players on Sonics as well that everyone gets really hyped up about. It's, it's hyped up about. Sorry, it's Grixer, Rex, and Ganson. All of them having a lights out performance. 5 2, 6 2, and 8 and 1 across the three of them. Really running the show here. It's not to say that Yeti hasn't got involved. We have seen him get the odd entry here or the odd closing kill there. When the rest of your team are dropping kills like this, why would it change? And Virtue, I mean, I think he was trying to cover his flanks and no one would follow him down the hatch, but fundamentally gave away where he was. Panicked a little bit because he realized he was getting burnt to death on the drop through the hatch and just made it far too easy to kill him. I mean, it was always, you know, it was, it was always stacked against him. He was 1v2, um, but 1v2 is, is absolutely winnable. And you want to oh, give yeah. yourself, you know, every opportunity to do so. Like you say, maybe not the uh, maybe not the best decision. I think it's one of Playing those. Playing with you, fire, ain't it? It's not. I think oh, oh, it's one of those. You drop through the hatch, you see the canister there. You think, yeah, let's pop it, stop anybody following me. Uh, you know, it's one of those. You just shoot it out as you pass in. You don't necessarily probably think the next three steps ahead as to, oh, the fire's going to actually fall down the hatch and it's going to be on top of me. You know, you don't necessarily necessarily think about the the uh, the spread the area that it's covering everything else so g2 having a very tough first half one five uh, things are sat against them at the minute as they move on to the defensive half but we've got to give it to sonics they deserve a hand right now because they have been clinical so far in that first half they've got a good read of what to expect out of g2 despite not seeing theme park from them very often um, i think that might be part of the problem for g2 here they just look like they just, I don't know, there they doesn't seem to be too much structure. It's just run in and let's try and take gunfights. And that's why they're finding themselves in these 1v1s. It doesn't seem to be like organized pushes for yeah. me. It's G2's play style is what you might call a hero play style. And I always reference it. It's about the hero plays. The number of times early in the stage they'll be against a team that I have felt at least look clearly better than them as a team. But when you've got Doki dropping a 3k one round, Citizen a 4k the next, Adam Al a 3k the next, then back to Doki for another multi-kill. There's only so much you can do against stuff like that when the players are just that capable and that confident. Right now, we're not really seeing that. Again, you look down the, down the kill feed or down the leaderboard, sorry. For G2, no one's really proving to be that hero that they need. So who's, gonna be, who's it going to be in the second half, Tim? Right now, I'd only put money on it being one of the Sonics, to be honest with you. Um, you know, they're the ones that are looking far more structured and organized. The fact that G2 have moved on to the defense might be helpful for them in that sense, because, you know, by its nature, it is more structured and organized. Yeah. Uh, you're going in with a setup. You have the game plan. The attackers have to adapt to you. Um, but honestly, Sonics just look far more comfortable on theme park for me. I mean, Doki ran past us on his way to the bathroom, and, you know, he kind of gave us that kind of view of what the map is. Like, yeah, we know what it is. And he said, defense, you'll see us look a lot better there. And so far, not to take one kill away from it, but at least here it's going better because I believe they only got one entry back in that first half. They've now doubled that here in this round. More importantly, it's not the complete hard breach, but it is um, a big portion of it. We've got Kansen on the Maverick still able to work at opening up those reinforcements, but obviously it's just a little bit more dangerous and a little bit more time consuming. It looks like the Maverick will probably be successful. G2 need to not lose any lives here. This is an important factor for them. Um, you know, they've got themselves the advantage, got themselves the opening kill, and it's something we haven't seen them do fantastically well is then take advantage of that. For the time being, Sonics have done something that G2 did They've got themselves the map control that they need. They've gone in. They've taken that top floor east side. They can now start working towards site. They're very focused on their goal. G2, like I say, we're a little bit lackluster in exactly what map control do we need to take. But Yeti, just straying a little bit there and wandering into site. Slammed by Citizen. And the nades coming raining through as well, but not finding their target. Doki gets another in the round. Much better from G2. Maybe it's the, defense, the, the curse of Theme Park on the attack inside. Team's just not looking super confident there just yet, but don't count these two out. I've touched on how well Grix is playing. The same with Kansen, the same with Rexon, and two of the three are still alive in this round. 
Grixer working forward now, just looking to find himself an angle if he can through into sight, but he's going to have to find a very good angle. He's 1v4, he's shut down. Prano manages to find that kill, and that's going to be G2 taking a very important round. Of course, any more for the Sonics will leave them on map point and guaranteed overtime. G2 don't want to let it get to that. Take their first defence. They have broken the momentum of the Sonics now. That is the important thing. G2 need to build from this, and they're going to be moving on to initiation for the next defence. So they're happy with the top floor. It's pretty much a mirror image that you would expect here. They will take initiation office. The Sonics might still try the east-sided push, but they will have less room if they choose to do so because they'll basically get to the site sooner because it's on that side of the map. They may choose to push in from the cafe side, but G2, they played that pretty solidly. They didn't really overextend themselves. They were happy to play from site. They just played for the angles that Sonics were opening up. It was okay. It's interesting how you've seen the change come in here compared to what we saw earlier on. Like, no Jaeger on side here, so I can't imagine you're going to see a hole, a hole at the end of long, for example. Instead, you've got things like the mirror. So, a lot better at being able to hold down areas like Cash if you reinforce off one wall, put the mirror window on it, leave the other one soft. You can just step out and spray challenge very, very comfortably. No doubt, one inside of office, one inside of initiation. Hold off anything from Cash or Dragon side, and then you can have two or three players holding out towards Cafe behind shields, potential laser gates, things like that. There's no Aruni in this round, but just to give an example. So, yep, G2 doing exactly that. You can see the shield facing in towards Cafe. Makes sense to me. A lot of caution from Sonics as they approach the building here. Obviously, a little bit of early round aggression was something that they tried to bring to things. So they're not going to be getting caught out by that, just watching for any potential peaks. We've got Claymores going down again, cautious of the jump outs. They weren't overly successful for them, particularly the second time that they tried it. Um, it was pretty much lesson learnt, but they are not going to fall foul of it themselves. Stacking onto initiation this time. So it looks like there is going to be a little bit of west-sided pressure. I did comment that if you go completely from the east side as an attacker here, you've got a lot less room to work with. You've got control, you've got cash. Other than that, you're straight onto the site. So you need to be making sure that you impact on that cafe side because usually you're going to have defenders playing back into bunk, back into um, daycare, as we can see there, looking to hold the site at more of a distance. That was a little bit wonky there. I don't think it was quite the intent that he was looking for with the C4, but the drone surprised him for a quick second. There is still a player out on those break windows, and now Prana bringing out the second mirror window, so saving that one in back pocket. I like and, that. Yeah, I think it's quite smart. You've got the one that you're playing behind, I believe it's inside of initiation, and then you know you can turn the second one to be wherever you want to put it. Is it facing out towards Cafe, because that's where they come from, and Yellow Stairs, or is it instead out towards Cash? Good. Exactly that. You can just wait, see what's happening. Uh, Look at you the know, drone count, by the way, Tim. They've chewed through basically eight every of drone that Sonics has got halfway through the round. Fantastic play from G2 here on the defence. A much, much better performance than we saw. But how are they going to stack up to this? Virtue on the ward and going to be super important here as the Candelas come in. They continue to rein in, continue to flash everybody out. But Virtue, if anything, he's running towards the danger. He's running towards the noise. He the knows window. that he wants that fight. Alamo gets one. Alamo gets two. Virtue with the glasses yeah. of the ward and manages to get a third and a fourth comes in and that leaves us now in a one versus five it's Grixer it's shut down it's a flawless round for G2 and they've woken up on the defence there's that was so smooth by Virtue by the way I commended for it in quietly and I think it was Fresh earlier on who tweeted out basically saying you know Deepet will never get the love that he deserves because he spends 70 to 80% of the round on cams for his team but he does a lot I think you're sort of seeing that with Virtue, where maybe a year and a half ago, he would be in the front line. He'd be the flex player alongside Citizen. I always think about those two as a pairing. They were an absolute terror pair. Whereas now he's playing more of a flex support role. You're not going to see him having big shiny moments like that. But one, to have the balls to go for the aggression through the flashes of the Candelas as they come out, to then sidestep your way across on towards Long of Arcade and get the kill long down Arcade, turn back around and get the kill on Super, just timed it so well, hit the crucial shots that he had to manage, manages utility incredibly well, just everything exactly. Virtue did there was spot on. Let's see if G2 can keep this going, because right now I think there's going to be uh, a little bit of panic setting in amongst the NA fans, obviously. Sonics, Sonics will lose this round, they'll have a tactical timeout, and then it's anyone's guess what comes next. Absolutely, I would completely agree with that. I think this round is, is particularly key. Um, you know, we often talk about round 9, round 10, depending on what the score is, um, but if G2 can do this and get back within touching distance, then yes, I think, like I say, the NA fans might just have a little bit of a worry on their hands as to whether um, the Sonics are able to bring the first points home 
come for the region on day one or not at this stage. G2 looked, I'll be honest, all but beaten after that first half. The Sonics were head and shoulders above them um, when they were playing on defence, but it certainly seems that we're having the same attacking wars out of the Sonics here. It's part of the thing more on the map, I think. I spoke about it earlier on the bottlenecks, for example, that you have to run through. Just so tight and it can be so difficult. It's just attack on team part, to it be is, fair. It is, literally. Again, this is why so many teams, when they first got added to the map pool, were just like, yeah, hell no, insta-ban. And many have stayed that way. And I think a few creative teams have said, actually, there's a real good opportunity here to play a map that others simply don't want to play. And we know that if we haven't got a like, perma-ban perma guarantee that, at the very least, they'll have to perma-ban it against us because they know that we do play it. So it's, it all plays into that larger map ban strategy. Rexon is just ready to go. He's on his drone. Squix is going to be joining him, um, looking at potentially getting into the map. But before he does, he's going to take Alamo down, who was going for that jump out. Nothing learnt by G2 as they were able to take advantage of the Sonics' aggressions. The Sonics have been able to do the same in return. Kanzen holding the line there. He's the one supporting Rexon at trying to get inside of Cafe Doke. He's on low health as well. And Surely this round not. that I said was particularly important is looking like it could could go in the favour of the Sonics right now. They've got themselves inside of the map. Prano going to be taken down by Grixo. Sonics looking good. Pressure is the only way I can summarise it as well, Tim. Just jackal track, nades, you name it. Everything flying at them. Citizen at least getting one back and giving G2 a moment to breathe. And now they're all back on site. Things can settle for a second. But Sonics, I feel they've had a great first couple of minutes there. Two kills coming through. Sure, they've lost one in the process. They've gone through most of their utility in terms of frag grenades at the very least. And now they've got a lot still to work with in the last 60 seconds. Yeah, it's been a great fight over top floor. Absolutely. Uh, Sonics have now got that vertical control so they can start working towards site. As I've said, and we saw it previously, it's not the most critical thing for this site. Um, Super, he needs to get down there and start opening up some angles with that hard breach. 45 seconds left to go because otherwise we've seen what happens when you try to push into Armoury and Throne without the hard breach having been applied because at that point you're going in through single doors. It looks like Super's just trying to judge exactly where the mute jammers are so that he can make sure that those Stelma devices are successful. 25 seconds left to go. Oh, that you is exactly silly what they needed. C4 did his own mute jammer off as Not well. Not good. So now this can get opened up for absolute free. I understood the intent again, but the idea just didn't quite come to execution. Super's the one now looking to play at long range. He's got that diffuser in back pocket, but Grixer has come down split. The man behind Throne is not going to be there for much longer. Doki gets one, finds two, but can he hold on? He finds one more. It's a one versus one against Grixer. Doki's clutched it out. Unbelievable plays from Doki there. G2 just able to hold on. And ultimately, I feel it came down to what we discussed about how late in the round that angle was getting opened up from the bottom of Yellow Stairs. The hard breach was just really late on. Virtue, as you say, not ideal. Clearing off that utility himself could have burnt even more time. But with only 20 seconds left to go after that was... See, because... We're going to go back through the same three sites here as well. You'll see them go through the same rotation. Sonics need to adapt based on what they've learned in those last three rounds, what they've seen, what's gone right, what's gone wrong. So the timeout there makes total sense. But again, if G2 are relying on winning rounds coming down to hero plays, Sonics will eventually break through. I think this was one of the best attacks for the Sonics um, oh, onto Bunker Deca. Hands down. They went in very quickly, got control of oh, East. Oh, last round. Uh, <laughs> no, no, this one particularly for Sonics. Um, we saw them go in, they got control of East, control into control, into initiation, into office very quickly. Um, they got the hard breach opened up on into sight. Uh, they had the flanks locked down. They were looking good. And then... There was, I think it was Yeti, just pushed on into site. He just ran on into the middle of site and he was cut down from break room. Citizen managed to get the opener. And from there, they were just picked off the Sonics as they tried to push on in. They didn't really use the angles that they got from the hard breach. They were trying to push from elsewhere. And so for me, the first half of their attack was good. Do the same thing again. Get yourself in cash, in control. Get yourself established nice and quickly. Open up that wall. It's what happens from then. How do you prep yourself? How do you get yourself ready for that final? Final execution. That's what the Sonics have got to improve upon. And if they can do that, there is a round here to be won for them, definitely. What I love is it's an exact inverse of what we saw before. When we were talking back in the first half about, all right, you're going in, you're getting picked off in the mid-round. Sonics are super solid and get two or three kills in a row. 
Now I'm looking at it, the exact same thing is happening back on the other side. But the big difference once again is G2 are doubling down on the mirror. They've already lent into that once. I like the dynamic nature of Prano's play. This time around he hasn't held onto the second one, he has deployed it, but the C4 is still in back pocket. Here we go. Sonics are looking to build for that east side of clearance as as expected, um, as they did last time. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, it was something that worked for them. They're looking to get on in. They're going to meet a challenge potentially from office. I think that's where the drones are coming in, um, particularly to look for. They know that cash is clear, um, but they need to know whether they're going to be challenged through office. Now, interestingly, they're potentially going to be challenged through two walls here, Des. They've got the mirror looking into office, but then they've got the soft wall opened between office and cash, exactly where we're looking right now. So, play from the mirror they can actually defend from top of yellow stairs all the way out towards cash door and that could be that could be smart from g2 very much could i like how it gives them a lot of control without having to actually hold the ground itself they haven't got to put players there and commit utility that far forward instead they can kind of dig back a little bit play closer to one another like top yellow right now should be a fortress for these boys to be able to hold on to and when they feel like it's getting a little bit dicey you rotate through just like this from Do doki and you've got a new fullback point to come to that is basically a fortress to get through drones again does down to three for sonics they're going to be mm. playing largely blindly into this defense in the final minute prano he gets kanzen this could get leveled up for g2 here as they continue holding on stall what they will not be moved here as Sonics once again have got to a similar position and stalled out. Alamo finds Rexon. They've got that east side control. They've got cash pretty much. There's no challenge in there, but they can't do anything with it yet. He manages to come in from behind though. Manages to find one onto Citizen. 34 seconds left to go. It's four versus three, but you feel like G2 are comfortable. Yeah, they've got that little flank off from Yeti that caught G2 on the backside there. They weren't expecting it, which does mean they're a little bit exposed here. Their focus has been elsewhere, but a player coming in through break. Yeti finding almost won but not quite finishing it off and there goes virtual onto another they've been torn apart here tim and despite looking like a good flank was on i don't see yeti being able to hold this one down prano goes in for the kill g2 equalize it up to five and five and you can hear him starting to get noisy across the way. I'm sure I don't need to remind everybody at home that this was at a point five one to the Sonics. We've got to, of course, give a little bit of leeway for the attackers on theme park. It is not an easy map to attack onto, um, but G2 showing some real heart, some real spirit here. They were 5-1 down at the end of the first half, and they are right now, Des, staring down the barrel of potentially bettering that, going 6-0 and taking all three points from the NAS idea with what would have to be the biggest comeback that we have seen on day one. It is, yeah. And we almost saw it from Sandbox, right? The 6-0 earlier that we thought, oh, there's a comeback coming on here, but they just didn't quite manage to complete it. I think they got to 6-3 and then it was closed out at 7-3 to the other side. So for G2, just kind of, again, leaning in towards that confidence that Doki had earlier. You know, have faith in the defence. We'll be fine once we get on defence. It's showing up in spades. If this comes down to only one attacking round win, man, Sonics will be kicking themselves about that one round that they let Doki clutch up. Initiation is going to be the defensive site for round 11. Sonics again. Last time around, we saw this back in round number eight. It was a G2 win, as has been every single defense so far. Um, it was the round, if you remember, with the Ying playing out on break window. Um, we had the Warden brought along by Virtue in position once again. And Virtue and Alamo basically dominated the top of Arcade into break. And they just got kill after kill and were able to close out the Sonics attack. The Sonics never really got themselves established inside of the map for this one, I think was part of the problem. They were playing in through the break windows, trying to play in behind those candelas, but it just never really happened for them. So I'd like to see them take a little bit more map control this time and just see, you know, what can they do with it? They couldn't really get into Cafe last time. There's not a lot of room inside of Cash and Control to play into. If they can just get hold of a bit more territory, then we'll see. It could be game on. You see, once again, these drones just rolling around. Four down already. I know, like, five down. Sometimes you look at drone counts and you're like, is it really G2 really are chewing deal? through drones. They are, but this is what G2 are doing that they haven't really done well historically, I don't think. I always think back to G2 playing against Rogue on bank. And the number of times that G2 would fall back at the minute and a half mark, regardless of how much ground had been taken by Rogue, I was like, why? Well, one thing they're doing really good here is staying out in the map until they're forced to move away, right? You get droned, you're not stupid enough to stay in the same spot, you'll move back a little bit. But what you're then seeing is players like Doki just circle back into that space once again and just keep on forcing Sonics to have to re-drone the same spot of the map over and over and over again. It's really smart, like, starvation play in a way, just trying to keep them away from these critical areas of the map, and maybe that's why Sonics are really stalling out. 
Exactly that. Right now, we're going to be back on the drones for the Sonics. They've still got five. Uh, they've had five for the last minute or so, so not losing too many there. That boards well um, for this attacking push. Two but die. As we can see, they've done two die, just as I say, that cast the curse. I do apologise. And here, we've got them all pushing in from the east side. They're going to be getting the breach open, this time looking more towards um, office rather than initiation that it was last time. But Prano on the mirror is potentially going to be a problem. He's just cautious of the yellow stairs. Alamo just able to slow that lane down there. It's not all about plant denial from the smoke. Sometimes it is about pushing and just preventing those attacker lanes being utilised Doki's getting aggressive here he knows that there's one in bathroom oh, he's no just going to hold himself tight to the wall that could they be a disgusting play Des they can't draw it out but he goes down anyway Rexon's going to find him on a quick swing around I think Doki there moved a little bit too soon yet he's up at top yellow as well this is the kind of control that Sonics are looking for as the plant now starts to go down Virtue on this warden has already been lethal today finds one back but the plant completes and now G2 have got a retake against again a real bottleneck heavy map really it really difficult for them to do anything about that diffuser going down citizen he's trying to get on the flank he's gonna have to do something special here and counters Grixer closes him down and it's gonna be the Sonics that have the opportunity to take all three points they get themselves onto 6-5 we're going all the way to 12 but G2 they're gonna want a few more what makes me nervous Tim is the site that we should be stepping into if they complete the rotation they could go back into bunk again but by the looks of it it's gonna be armory and thrown okay nope they're changing away entirely Forget what I said. My only concern here is one you've just played there and Sonic's figured out what worked. Now, unless you as G2 know exactly what went wrong in that round, the exact moment, the exact amendment required to get things correct, Sonics haven't really got to change anything. They were out of information. They had no drones left. They were all pushing in really from the one side of the map until Yeti hit G2 on the flank. But that's the second or third time this half I've seen Yeti pull that kind of play off and G2 haven't adapted to it. So you'll forgive me for being nervous, but... They've got to be so careful about these flanks coming in. Sonics have got their opportunity now. This is what they've been fighting for. It's not been an easy slog for them on the attack, but they get the round that they needed to guarantee themselves over time at least. Any, you will all be glad to know that you will at least have one point today. <laughs> you won't walk out of day that one much empty I can handed. say. That much I can say. There will be at least a point for Any on day one. I tweeted this earlier. I was like... Uh, this is the moment where someone tunes in, Sonic's turned to the whole world just like, you must be truly desperate to come to me for help. Because NA have had nothing all day and they're the ones that can now have that opportunity to ensure that NA don't go home empty handed. Here we go then, let's see if it all ends here and now if G2's miraculous start proves to fall slightly short or if Sonic's can be the ones that get off on the mega foot and maybe for themselves find us going all the way through to overtime. Twitch drone coming on through. Keep a close eye on that drone count as it has been a bit of a staple of the last few rounds. As you say, they've got to quickly find the answer here, G2. If they feel that the entire round hinged on that Yeti flank, that should be fairly easy to deal with. You know where the flank came from. You know where the other flanks can come from. You lock them down. You make sure nobody comes through there. And that may well be the thought process for G G2 here that, right, OK, that was what opened us up. We can just stop that. They may be confident that the Sonics didn't really have anything pushing directly towards site up until that point. So that may be what they're trying to hold on to. We see the drones getting taken out heavily again. There's down to four. It didn't stop the Sonics last time, but it is certainly a factor. Oh, oh Grixer. I mean, God bless that he didn't die because he can at least juice himself up to just over halfway HP, but, well, just half HP, sorry, but... I don't know. That's one of them again that, like, they're asking the earlier round. I think it was round three or four where three members of Sonics were down to about a third HP but not quite finished off. And they just came back to bite G2 in the later stages of the round. Super. He's up on the roof. He's going to be looking to get down into control, I would imagine. Um, potentially, I'm not sure where they're going to be looking to open up with the hard breach, but there's a bit of information getting fed in on the yellow pings. Yeti thinking about making a challenge, but instead it's going to be Super who gets himself onto the rappel. One minute ten is on the clock, and they need to be careful here. The Sonics look like they're running a little bit short of ideas. They go in one place. Nope, they go in another. Nope. Grixer, he does manage to get an opener onto Prano, though. That is big for the North American team. 
Again, for me, they'll just repeat the same thing as last round, and that's exactly what it looks to be the case. Again, Doki holding this angle, doesn't quite connect the shots that he needs to on Rexon, who's holding the tight angle, finally gets down, but Doki gets swung, doesn't get taken down. It's absolute chaos inside of the office showers at this point, Tim. And now Yeti is looking for that backstab. I spoke about it earlier. You've got to watch out for this G2, else he will end this game. Nade goes in to try and find Doki. It does damage, but it does not find the kill. They're going to take the opportunity to get Rexon up, but 27 seconds left to go. Here comes Yeti. How much of an impact oh, is he going to have? Absolutely zero as Alamo. He manages to find the kill. 20 seconds left to go. Sonics need to get moving. Need to get themselves inside of sight. Alamo, he goes big for G2 when they need him. He gets a second onto Grixer with a headshot. Citizen, Citizen, it's four versus one. G2 have held on. There's the seven seconds left to go. It's all up to Super. It's a one versus four. He finds the first. Can he find the second? No. Des, we're going to overtime. I've been waiting to hear those words all all day, Tim, and what a better game for it to go to as well. Oh, we spoke about the beef coming in. It only builds now into these last three rounds. The best part for G2, Tim, is they start on the defense. They'll be absolutely buzzing about that. For Sonics, it's a bit of a kicker. You couldn't get it done in regulation. You were 5-1 up and just couldn't quite tip it over the finish line as close as they've come a couple of times here. You'll look back at that round where Doki clutched up. Sonics will be kicking themselves. They should have had that round done and dusted. G2 start out in bunk and daycare. I can't wait to see how these next three go. <laughs> We are on the edge of our seats, Des. We're not um, on our seats, Tim. We're not at all. We've jumped up out of them. We've slipped straight off the edge of them because this one is just far too exciting. NA versus EU, Sonics versus G2. There are so many storylines here and we go the distance. We are into overtime. Best of three rounds now. And as you say, G2 bringing in the advantage with the defence. They're going to go to bunk and daycare. Sight that they won on both occasions when defending ending there so G2 coming in with a bit of confidence Five here to go. take a breath we have the prep phase. I don't want to you're gonna have to Tim because we have like probably another 90 seconds or so of the drone action that we love seeing already down a to like a drone action for the Sonics to be fair G2 have been right on top of those drones there's drone action for the start of the round but then they do die out pretty quick it's a a really crap version of Robot Wars, to be honest with you, Tim. Let's keep a close eye on it, though, and see how this one plays out. Because, again, I really hope Sonics are learning from that kind of thing and that they are adapting. But G2, again, are just staying so mobile that Sonics are having to drone multiple times the first room into the building. That's just how aggressive G2 are being and how many questions they're forcing out of the Sonics. Kansen going to be opening up the hatch with the Maverick there, just allowing a little bit of an access point for the Sonics. We've seen them previously attacking this site. They Come like to drone. get themselves into the east side, work themselves across. They take the map control of the east side very well, but G2 sort of let them have it to a degree. They've tried pushing through initiation. They've tried getting that wall opened up. It's just not really done the business for them, the Sonics, previously. And G2, no surprise to see them set up completely on the west side. They've got their position. They're confident. They're just going to wait for the gunfights. I wonder at what point they stick someone on the windows here as well, unless the plan is to completely forget about break room and just say, look, we go straight towards site well, here. Well, last time around, the Maverick did open up a lovely big rotation, like um, multiple size hole, sorry, on the left-hand side. Then I've their nade hole on the right-hand side. It's a little bit different this time around. I'm not quite sure exactly what the game plan is, unless they want Super to help them get this one opened up with the Selmers. Indeed, they will. He's right here. Two of those have already been used. So maybe now that that's opened up, he'll rotate off and play on the window. My only concern is he's got the diffuser in back pocket, Tim. Half he goes down, it's a long journey to recover that. It diffuser. really is. That is is a big risk. Um, they've got half of the round, though. There is time. Um, we're going to have Super looking to open that up. He's just, again, making it even more difficult for G2 to play deep in that site. And we can see that G2 have been forced right back out onto the arcade mezzanine. This is probably about the best opportunity, I think, that Sonics have had on this site. They've got time. They've got manpower. They've got access to site. There is the potential for a successful execute here. And Rex is even looking to move his way in and pressure Cafe. The surrounding G2, they are making it difficult for no them idea. to hold any one direction. Run, Doki, run. They know exactly where he is, but the place again gets popped back on again. Swings for the angle, but Rexon is just ready. 
also clears out the laser gate as well, so his access has not been oh denied. My God. Citizen and Alamo, though, they turn it on its head as they find one kill each. Both headshots, Prano onto Super, one support to another. Grixer, he goes in, he's trying to get anything going here. It's down to him and Yeti, two versus four. 20 seconds, they need to find some kills, not each other, though. Yeti, he manages to find Virtue, two versus three. G2 are backing away from these fights oh a little bit, but they're being caught out. They know that they just need to survive. That's Grixer down and out. Can they find the final kill? Six seconds left to go, G2. You just need to survive. Keep yourself out of the fights. Alamo, he finds his kill. And G2 have map point opportunity. Just one more round, boys. Just one more round. What a day that'll be to start things off for G2 as well. Two for two. Admittedly, the one coming in overtime does still open the door to potential shenanigans on our final day. And for Sonic's at least taking a point, if it gets to that point, it's still not the end of the world. It's still NA's first point, Tim, if it really comes down to that. They're going to go back, they're going to go to bunk and daycare themselves in terms of side selection onto the defensive side. I'd be shocked if this doesn't go to 15, though. The only site that G2 won um, was Armoury. Uh, that was the only site that they were able to get the attacking win on. So as you say, um, statistics would suggest that we likely go all the way, which is, to be honest, I said it at the beginning of the game, exactly what we wanted to see out of this one. They're going to play each other a second time later in the week as well. And you know what, Des? I already hope that one goes to 15 as well, because these are, for me, two of the teams in the league that are full of character, full of personality and they are delivering it by the bucket full in the server as well this is the siege that we want to see out of them and this is the reason that these are two teams that are so heavily focused upon i'm just checking some it damn it we've been had <laughs> we've been now, had my claim is we were stood on desk we were getting ready to cast but Xset did beat NIP just before we went live in this game oh there we go we didn't see the end of the points. game thank you hannibal for the shout out our bad, but we were kind of getting ready to... We were a little bit busy working. <laughs> yeah, you know, just a done thing. It's all good, it's all good, it's all good. We're correcting on that then. Sonics can be the second in a team to get points today if it comes down to it. At least now they're guaranteed the one. You stood on my foot then, mate. Thanks very much. Tim's getting a little bit excited, see, stepping across the casting booth in his little dancey jiggy it's thing. It's very that rare does. that I come over to your side, Des. I know, normally there's like an invisible line that we form down the middle. Well, is there going to be an invisible line that G2 cannot pass here on the attack? That Woo! is the... Qu there you go. That is the question. They're going to be attacking, as we've said, onto Bunk and Daycare. Unsuccessful so far twice. Uh, they tried to work vertically underneath. We saw a couple of attempts at nades. Didn't really get any joy with them. I did say coming into it, G2 found joy with nades against Sandbox, but Theme Park is a bit of a different beast when it comes to that utility. There's far fewer opportunities from underneath usually to use them. Has Citizen found one though potentially he's working his way around and bunk daycare is one of the areas that you can use them but no he's a little bit too late whenever i think of eu teams and playing vertical nades i always think of rogue and i think in the first game earlier crying started out with a vertical nade kill and i was like that's just Bomb a classic it's not really too heavily used by others like even citizen i think of as a nade player that will play more laterally he'll just toss it into a spot where he knows a player is sat off the back of some information rather than playing from below but here they are going fishing just not quite finding the biggest prize they're looking for which is the members of sonics Dorky then looking to get aggressive from control. Needs to be careful. They know that he is there. But surrounding them pretty well here, G2. They are doing what I said earlier, where they're identifying positions and potentially cutting people off. There's now somebody from the Sonics. I'm not sure who it is. Just stuck out on the east side of things here. Um, could be a problem for them. They need to think about just exactly how they're going to get back unless mm. they're going to play their life there and just look to be a continued nuisance. They've got a little bit stuck because G2 themselves are now also low on drones the information is somewhat limited but that's the opening they're looking for kanzen going down doki into a second if they tore them through here tim it might be an a and six on the attack as well a big 3k for alimau and grixer 16 and 6 has got to do it all Bronos getting the diffuser down surely this is over right now grixer's down to about 20 health he's fighting hard he's got citizen down citizen with no utility to get himself back on his feet but it doesn't matter as grixer moves out to the top of yellow stairs alimau cuts him down and that's going to be G2 taking the win 8-6 and a great day for EU continues it does and that was a match that delivered as well I oh. know I know it was